welcome to a July update video of Weldale Locomotion Depot. Firstly, I'm sorry for the uh, long delay of an uh, update video. I've been very busy with work again. Um, and basically, it's sort of like prevent me of doing any work on this layout, um, which is really annoying. But um, recently, I had a bit more spare time, and you know, the spare time became very handy. Like, for example, I've added um, free locomotives to the DCC fleet, two steam engines, and a brand new Hornby Car 66. And what, what I did with that model is I sort of like modified it. Uh, but I'll go through with that first uh, later after this clip. Um, also, I've added a, a diesel maintenance depot from Hornby. And um, what I did was I sort of like modified that and also repaint it, respray it, and add some LED lights. So I'll go what I've done so far one at a time and you know get your views and show you what we're up to. So let's begin. Alright, the first update of the video, um, this is a Hornby Class 66, uh, one of the 2019 range, um, I purchased this model for 67 quid from Realms of Sheffield, quite a good bargain really, um, I know a lot of people are not very keen on the uh, Hornby Class 66 because basically they're not well detailed, they're just plastic and cheap. Um, on like the um, Batman's Class 66 or Hatton's brand new 66 which are mega mega detail but also very expensive as well and I wanted um, a bit of a model train that is a bit modern and like a 66 was the first idea um, now why did I purchase this model? well for two reasons one I could afford it and two, uh, I wanted to like test myself as a modeler if I can uh, like customize or modify uh, a less detailed model. Because, you know, I know people were moaning about Hornby just not adding more details to these models. But for me, it's a bit of a challenge. And like a challenge is something where you should endure it and like test yourself as a modeler and take it to the next step and this was the ideal project to do because firstly I wanted to add LED lights which I have um, I had to drill some holes through um, took a bit of time but I managed to get them through um, it was quite straightforward all I have to do is just follow the instructions uh, match the wires solve them up and solve them into the um, the uh, DCC socket or whatever it's called and that was that but also I wanted to um, add sound to the model and great thing about Hornby is uh, Hornby got a very cheap well not cheap sound decoder but a good bargain for a sound decoder of a class 66 uh, it was the Hornby TTS 66 sound decoder um, and basically I've upgraded the speaker, which I'm not a fan of Hornby's TTS speakers, I think they're rubbish, into a proper mega bass speaker, and it's quite unique as well. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you the uh, difference between a Hornby TTS speaker versus a mega bass speaker, and like try and listen to like the difference between a normal speaker or an upgrade speaker and like it'd be more interesting to see how that goes so fingers crossed you enjoy it and I hope that might help you of like or give you an open book of like how beneficial it is to upgrade a speaker so I hope you enjoy this one so let's begin
All right, I hope that gives you an idea what um, an upgrade speaker can do to a Hornby sound decoder, TTS. Um, I think it makes a massive difference, and you can hear the um, sound more clear, and you can hear the echoes as well. Um, this 66 is brilliant. I think upgrading um, a speaker from a Hornby TTS sound decoder, or speaker whatever, um, makes a massive difference, because... Um, so far, I've got um, a Hornby A4, Hornby Black 5, a Hornby 66, a Hornby Class 37, and a, and a Hornby Class 20 TTS sound decoder with all upgrade speakers. And like the upgrade speakers do make a difference. And like with this 66, it is great and it's so realistic. And I think this is one of Hornby's best sound decoders to buy. Just for 40 quid, it doesn't hurt you to buy. A 40 quid sound decoder if you want to upgrade a Hornby Class 66 or you can add a sound decoder by using um, a 21 converter to an 8 pin chip to access the TTS sound decoder and I think it's very beneficial and like if you can upgrade the speaker in a Hornby 66 or Batman or Hattons then I see there's no problem but it's very unique how Hornby produce a very good sound decoder if you upgrade the speaker. So I would strongly recommend you that. All right, back to the um, 66 LED lights. Um, both lights work. I mean, it can go forward or backward directions. I mean, if I show you, that's forward right now, and that's reverse. Both sides do work. Um, the drilling part was very hard to do because like one, you can't use, I don't think you should use an uh, electric drill because one, if you use an electric drill, it will probably be too fast and you could damage the front of the model. So you don't want to do that. So you have to use like, like one of these hand drill manual things, whatever they're called. And basically you have to drill the center of the, um, the uh, LED lights or the um, tail lights or headlights, whatever they're called. And basically you just have to drum through very slowly in your own pace and make sure they are in the correct center so yeah these lights were very easy to solder i mean all you have to do is just match the wires and just solder the um, center of the sockets basically and it's just quite straightforward really um, looking up this the led lights were made for um digital and eight pin as well so they were very beneficial to buy as well, um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, the headlights were very well. The headlights at the top, um, up there, um, those little black box things they kept coming off, and I had to like just make sure they get drilled through, and also the um, the body as well. But it went well. Um, got them back, well, fixed them on with a bit of plastic glue, just painted black, make sure there was no white marks. And, you know, it just really, really went well. And if you ever ask yourself, um, could I test myself as a model? Could I modify a model or a cheap model? And I would ask, I would say, is, look, go for it or try it. Because if you keep wondering if you can't do it or if you can or you don't know, I would strongly recommend do it. And... You know, it probably make a massive difference. So, I strongly recommend of giving it a try. Also, just one last final bit. Um, Hornby had some accessories. Um, also, I had like, that little snow plow at the bottom, and also some pipes, and also the name plates at each side. Again, I used some plastic glue just to make sure they stick permanently, so they won't come off. So, it went well. All right, let's set off. Alright, second update of the video. Um, I've added two steam locomotives to the uh, DCC fleet. Um, both Hornby, um, both models have the uh, Hornby TTS sound decoders with upgrade speakers, um, typical of me. But nonetheless, they work well. Um, both models are definitely over 10 years old, maybe 15. 
but they are really handful and really useful to run and they are still capable at that age but I've always looked after them for a very very long time and most of these, mo these two models were in a display cabinet um, after I tear down my old layout but nonetheless I'm surprised they still work so I'll show you one of my first models or one of my favourite models to be more precise um, if I just bring that forward bit slow starter um, this is my Hornby Black 5 number 44668 um, this model well basically you got the idea where I named it after my YouTube channel um, it's my first model that I bought from eBay um, 56 quid I think it was which was a real bargain at the time I think I bought it when I was 15 so that was about nine years ago which is incredible but ever since then this model has always given me a smile and the pleasure of just keep going like a real black five would and like the best thing is it still runs smoothly um, I know it's a bit old but it's a bit special to me um, it's got a crew inside which is fantastic and also it's got like this rear tail light at the back of its tender which is really nice and unique but nonetheless um, this model has a Hornby TTS um, sound decoder in with an upgrade speaker but the, uh, sa the speaker is not in there nor the decoder it's round here now as you know Hornby's um, TTS speakers for like a, a normal steam engine like this one or the A4 um, they tend to be round well you definitely can't fit um, a round speaker in there and also like if you want if you make an attempt to put a round speaker in there it will fit or will stay still so the alternative was um, with the upgrade speaker is to get um, like a sugar cube speaker and like what I did was the speaker and the sound decoder are right in there just inside the um, smelt box if you like and where the socket is around here now I will be short some images soon um, basically basically it was just getting rid of the speaker and upgrading the um, speaker itself but a speaker where um, I can fit in easily or add, add something to it as well and you know just give it the proper echo but again the speaker does work well I think it's a bit more better over the um, TTS sound decoder or, no sorry speaker and it really works well so if I just show you a demonstration how the model sounds so if I click one Nice. Cut the whistle. Click three. Click four. And click five. So there's about four whistles in total, which is very nice. And let's see how it moves. So if I just move it forward. Alright, reverse it back. Absolutely pleased with this model. Um, it still performs well. Yeah, it's a bit jerky, I know, but nonetheless, it still gives a very strong performance. And with the uh, TTS speaker and also running around on this layout, 
it still gives me that smile of pleasure of one of my favorite models still keeping going like the real thing so anyway i'll show you the next next model Okay, this is my Hornby A4 Golden Plover, number 60031. Um, I bought this model for 74 quid at Pontefract Model Railway Show, second hand. Best nick ever, a uh, proper bargain for Hornby A4 especially. Um, this model has always been a very good performer running, and also like, it, it's been hardly used um, which probably is very beneficial for a model like this. Um, now, if you recall one of my update videos, I had um, Hornby, another Hornby A4, um, Kingfisher, it's only our blue livery with some tail lights at the front and also a headboard of the Flying Scotsman. Well, that model was a bit of a teaser. Now, for some reason, right, I have fixed it, I have gave it a new motor, new wheels, all sorts, and still the model would not perform on DCC. It works well on DC, but not DCC, which I didn't understand why. So what I did was um, I decided to switch A4s and replace or switch decoders to this one here, and um, which this model thrives on DCC and like it really performs well and it's such a nice model to have I mean I've also upgraded the speaker as well I mean the speaker is not in the tender the speaker is again under the spelt box just around here or where the chimneys are and like it was easy to fit and also very um, clever as well because I think the sound performs very, very well. I mean, this model runs very, very well. I mean, if I give you a demonstration how the sound sound is good on a model that is over 10 years old. I mean, it's 13 years old this year, but you never know. Um, but it is still a unique detail model. So if I just click one. Click three and click four. I don't think five's a whistle, but I'll give it a try. Well, that was door shutting. But anyway, the model sounds good, and I think the speaker sounds good as well. Um, I think there are better. Um, DCC sound decoders of an A4, but with Hornby, this is a £40 cheap one and you know, with a crappy um, speaker. But if you upgrade the speaker, I think that does make a difference and you can hear it more clearer and more better. So if I just give you a demonstration of how it moves, so uh, just give it a whistle. Oh, just knocked itself off, but anyway, let's move forward. So yeah, I'm very pleased with having an A4 on my layout with a sound decoder. 
who we know is uh, TCS signed the code up. But I do plan to have another A4 on this layout with a more terrific sound decoder if you get my drift. But nonetheless, it's nice to have another model to run about on your layout. So I'm very pleased with these two models. Over 10 years old and they're still giving a strong performance, so thumbs up. Okay. Alright, third and final update of this video. Um, as you can see, this is an empty box of my Hornby Diesel Medicines Depot. Um, if you noticed earlier, I have modified or customised this depot. Um, firstly, I resprayed the walls from to grey, not in that colour, I didn't like it. I left the doors from the outside as it is. Um, we sprayed all the grey parts, well, these bluey light colours into grey. Um, got rid of these lights, replaced them with proper LED lights, and also I repainted um, these pipes as well to black. Also, I left the roof as is, and you see these um, these two window roofs, whatever they're called. Um, I resprayed them into black, matte black, and I think they look really nice. So, also the inside, it's got a bit of LED lights as well. Um, also the doors. Even the doors have LED lights right there as well. So if I show you the result first, whoop, zoom in. As you can see, there's the two diesel locomotives and there's the uh, LED lights and you know the um, respraying of the color. So I think we should just get a little bit more closer and see what's the inside. So let's begin. Okay, now we can see a bit more clear without the locomotives inside. I mean, as you know, there's one LED light there, one there on the um, walls, and also like the door has its own light at the top, and even this side. And if we just look down under, there's about six LED um, ceiling or lights inside where about in total one, two, three, six in total, all working well. And as you can see, I've sort of done some repainting side, also a bit of weathering on the um, oil, oil refuelers, where they're called, and you know they look really well. I mean, the good thing was right, um, the LED lights were hard to drill, and also. Um, to install and also the wires were a bit very messy about and very sensitive so I had to be very very careful of like not pulling any wires off and making sure they don't come loose. Now unfortunately one or two wires did come off uh, which basically when this was installed but I had to re undo it and just take it out and just re re refit the wires and you know, it took a bit of time and a little bit of swearing, but fortunate enough, I managed to get this um, depot fitted in. So, yeah, it was really hard work. Um, a lot of work had to be done into it. I mean, the respraying part was more easy. I mean, the grey was more easier. I mean, it was just quite simple, really. I mean, all you have to do is just don't spray it too fast or slow. Just spray it a few seconds at a time. Make sure the um, like the coat is exactly the match, and make sure there's nothing on it. Also, if you just do it really fast, you will probably get like different shades of color on it. If you do it slow, you probably will get the uh, right amount of color in. So, worth respraying these less detailed depots, in my view. Um, anyway, um, if you notice, if I just zoom in. Now, yeah, what is that little black stuff on the wires? Well, that's um, black tack. Basically, it's just keeping the wires um, in touch or in check, really. So, basically, let's say, for argument's sake, if these wires were, like, very close on the track and a locomotive, locomotive catch it um, and pull the wire off, then that would be a disaster. So, it's very important to make sure they would stick, stick on. So... Nothing major about that, but it's important just to make sure little things like that doesn't happen. 
So always cautious in my view. And it doesn't hurt to be ready as well. Um, very pleased with the um, the outcome of the um, layout or the depot really. Um, it's a bonus that at least this was easy to do really. Um, well, not easy, but it was affordable to do. Um, it's never easy doing like these sort of things because it tends to do a lot of drilling and a lot of um, patience as well. And lucky enough, I had the patience and I had the skill of like improving this diesel made it into depot. But if you ever want to um, challenge yourself, well, what I would say is just get ready and just remember you might swear a lot if you're gonna if you're gonna do a challenge like this because it was frustrating and it was very difficult but all in all I managed to pull through so that was the good thing also I just want to point something out um, this this lamp here doesn't work anymore I don't know why but it's just died so I've ordered some more lamps just to replace this one and also just in case either these two break um, so I bought two of these and get one replaced and get some light at the middle of the track here so yeah hopefully it'll come soon alright that's it for the um, July update video um, I'll make a bit of a running session video after this and also I'll make a, a long one as well of daylight and night of both steam and diesel locomotive depots. Um, I'll try and update a video before August hopefully. Um, the next plan is to ballast the track next. Um, but before that I need to get that lamp fixed and you know just Fingers crossed, um, things will go my way, and also, right now, work has quieted down at this moment. But um, I'm planning to do a bit more train spotting in the um, in coming days, and also, I'm going to Canada this August to Toronto and spend like two weeks down there. So, but lucky enough, I've got no excuse to like avoid this layout. I've got some time, and also. The next project is is to ballast the track. So, fingers crossed. So, I hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching.